Monday, January 9th, 2017 to order. Uh, if we can all stand for the invocation. Lord, bless those that are here, gathered here this evening to conduct the business for the city of Canby and the citizens of Canby, and that we all arrive home safely after our meeting. Let us do the, uh, the work of the city in a uh, business-like way, and that we're fair to uh, all concerned. In your name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> So, the first thing we're going to do is introduce the uh, new planning commissioner, Andre Chernyshov. Is that correct? Very good. Very good. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, <laughs> welcome. Welcome aboard. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, do we have any uh, citizen input on non agenda items? Okay. I assume that everybody has had a moment to uh, review the minutes of our November 28th, 2016 Planning Commission meeting. Are there any uh, corrections, additions, or changes? I will entertain a motion to um, approve the minutes. Mr. Chair, I recommend we approve the minutes from November 28th, 2016. I second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that we improve the minutes for November 28th, 2016 Planning Commission minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. New business. There is none. Okay, then we will move on to um, public hearing. We are going to Consider a request for a zone change uh, to change current zoning at 548 North Locust Street from R1 low density residential uh, zone to R2 high density residential zone. That would be ZC16-05. I will read the, uh, the script to make it all legal. The matter presently before the hearing body requires a public hearing. All interested persons in attendance shall be heard on the matter. If you wish to testify on this matter, please be prepared to step forward to the microphone at the appropriate time. State your name, mailing address, and interest in the matter. For those people other than the applicants that are interested in testifying as either proponents or opponents, please sign in on the sheet or speak up when we call for testimony. For longer presentations, proponents and opponents may buy time from one another. In so doing, those either in favor or opposed may allocate their time to a spokesperson who will represent the entire group. You may be limited by time for your presentation. Generally, the applicant will have a total of 15 minutes to speak. The proponents will be given five minutes each, the opponents will be given five minutes each, and those thought to be neutral on the matter will be given five minutes each. The applicant will then have 10 minutes for a rebuttal. All questions must be directed through the chair. Any evidence to be considered must be submitted to the hearing body for public access and to become a part of the record. All written testimony received both for and against prior to the hearing shall be summarized by staff and presented briefly to the hearing body during the staff report. Testimony and evidence must be directed toward the applicable review criteria contained as indicated in the staff report, the comprehensive plan, or the applicable land use regulations which the person believes to apply to the decision. Failure to raise an issue accompanied by statements or evidence sufficient to afford the decision maker and the parties an opportunity to respond to the issue may preclude appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals based on that issue. Failure of the applicant to raise constitutional or other issues relating to proposed conditions of approval with sufficient specificity to allow the local government to respond to the issue may preclude any act may preclude an action for damages in circuit court. Everyone present is encouraged to testify, even if it is only to concur with previous testimony. 
At this time, I would ask that any member of the hearing body who has a conflict of interest to please indicate the nature and extent of the conflict and whether you intend to participate in or abstain from the hearing, uh, from hearing the present matter. All good. Okay. Also, if any member of the hearing body has had any ex parte contact with anyone prior to this hearing, including a visit to the site, please declare the nature and extent of such contact at this time. None. I have visited the site and a local resident uh, spoke to me about this matter. Okay, and you're going to continue on? Yes. Okay. Uh, does any member of the audience have any questions for any commissioner regarding conflict of interest or ex parte contact? Okay. Uh, the public hearing will be conducted as follows. First, we'll have a staff report. Uh, then, uh, any questions, uh, if we have some questions for the for staff. Then we'll open the public hearing uh, for testimony. The applicant will have uh, no more than 15 minutes. The proponent, not more than five minutes each. Opponents, not more than five minutes each. Neutral, people that are neutral, not more than five minutes each, and then rebuttal, the applicant will have not more than 10 minutes. At that time, we'll close public testimony, then we'll have any more questions, then we will have a discussion and deliberation by uh, the commission. No additional testimony will be allowed unless specifically by, by me. Uh, and then we will have a decision shall be made by the hearing body at the close of the hearing or the matter will be content, continued to a date certain in the future and this will be the only not notice of that date that you will receive. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Brian. Thank you, Chair Savory and uh, good evening, commissioners. Uh, the request before us is a rezoning. Uh, We've had, uh, let me see by our case numbers, uh, maybe five of those in 2016, but this is the first one we've had for several years that was not in association with an annexation. And as you know, there, we do assign a zoning district that changes from county to city zoning when we have annexations. So this was a little bit uh, different for us. We had to go back a ways, I think 2007, to search for just a, straight rezoning and one of the primary things that we look at with rezoning is what the planning bible which is our comprehensive plan and we look at the comprehensive plan map that shows us the land use designation that's suitable over time uh, down the road in the future with the idea that over time certain areas of town may transition to a new and different use than it has today. And so we're talking about a property here that's at uh, 548 North Locust Street that is a single family residential lot that's uh, uh, zoned R1, which is low density residential. And the property that's just to the south is also a single family home but has a R2 high density residential zone uh, to it. And so this property is adjacent to the same zoning district uh, as the request is, which is to change the zoning to the high density residential zone, which would be found to be in accordance with our comprehensive plan that shows uh, this lot as suitable uh, to redevelop in the future to a higher intensity use, and in this case, the R2 zoning district. Uh, if it was separated with uh, R1 our zone in between, those become a little bit more difficult in analyzing the suitability because we like to see a logical transition to the new uses, and that usually means adjacent to, and quote, avoiding spot zoning, where you skip out somewhere uh, to rezone to a higher intensity use, rather than gradually moving outward. That reduces uh, conflicts when you don't do the spot zoning, 
you may still have a potential conflict with an adjacent property that's still a single family home, but the applicant has indicated he has no immediate plans for redevelopment of the site, but this is the first step towards that eventuality. And so once it's rezoned, whether the applicant retains ownership or decides to sell it to someone else, someone else could buy it and immediately redevelop to whatever use is allowed in the zone district that's being requested tonight. Uh, the R2 zone, it's uh, 11,761 square foot lot, has a single house on it now. The R2 zone is a unique high density zone in that it's our only zoning district that requires a minimum density. So if this was to be redeveloped, the single family home can continue as long as they wish once it's rezoned, but if they do wish to redevelop, they have to redevelop to a minimum density of four dwelling units per acre for a lot of this size. So that gives you some concept of the change in nature of this property if it was to redevelop. It will be quite different in nature than what it is today for that size property. This map here is simply showing you if this thing shines. I guess it doesn't shine on that thing. I've never tried that. Back up behind you, it shines on that one. <laughs> it shines on that one. Did too. you see it on there? I did. See? I see it on the wall, but I don't see it on the. There you are. I've seen it briefly. You can see it. Th I can't see a yeah. thing uh, from it's here. In and out. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see anything from here. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, the the idea is this map is showing you that you have the dark yellow, which is a high density zoning that's adjacent to our subject property, so it's a natural extension of that high density zoning northward along uh, North Locust Street. This second map shows you the extent of the comprehensive plans designation for high density R2 zone. And so we've got our subject property here, and it shows that two more lots could potentially transition to that higher intensity use down the road in the future. They're undoubtedly owned by uh, different people than the applicant tonight. A couple of the things that we reviewed that's outlined in your staff report uh, for rezoning. Uh, I already talked about the first one that's, that it would be redeveloped at four, minimum four units per acre. Uh, any rezoning by state statute has to indicate conformance with the uh, transportation planning rule. And right or wrong, uh, it's my understanding that we didn't really need to formally do a study of any type in order to demonstrate compliance uh, because when our transportation plan was adopted and approved in 2010, they studied the future traffic at that time because it projects out 20 and some years on what the uh, comprehensive plan designation would be and the amount of traffic that designation would generate rather than what the current zoning would. And so they took into account uh, and satisfied the requirements of a transportation planning rule that's associated with rezone, rezonings because they've already accounted for the additional traffic of those four dwelling units when the transportation plan was done and uh, there was no indication that this street or nearby intersections couldn't handle the additional traffic that would be generated by redevelopment of this single lot. Uh, a third area that was outlined in the staff report had to deal with the uh, comprehensive plan designating this lot and many others around North Grant Street and in this area as being an area of special concern that they labeled H. 
and if you look at the comprehensive plan, that special area that was designated H called for redevelopment in an orderly fashion to multifamily or duplex uses. That's about all that designation in indicated. So it would seem that this is in accordance with that special designation that was given in the comprehensive plan. So basically in conclusion, uh, staff felt that uh, this application uh, was completely in accordance with the comprehensive plan and our land development ordinance. Uh, we followed the procedures that are required for uh, notification and uh, for a rezoning and did the proper hearing notices and that the uh, zoning is completely in accordance with the comprehensive plan land use map designation. Uh, the rezoning complies with Oregon statute requirements with rezonings and the besides conformance with the comprehensive plan the second big criteria with rezonings is determining that the site as it could be developed if you agree to rezone it has sufficient utilities and infrastructure in place to accommodate that future use that might happen and all of the input that we received from our city engineer and the public utilities through uh, our pre-application process indicated that those utilities exist today satisfactorily in Knott Street that can handle the redevelopment of this property without extending any new uh, pipes, et cetera. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, We've, uh, we would recommend that the Planning Commission uh, approve ZC 16-05 and that the zoning be subject uh, to the designation of R2 as requested, which is in accordance with the comprehensive plan map. Are there any questions about this application? So in your experience, Brian, uh, are the the likely development is would be uh, a minimum of four townhouses, or what is the what types of development are more most likely to occur? Yeah, I would think because it's uh, a small parcel. Yep, yeah, I would think uh, probably the top thing that I would think of is some sort of fourplex type building, which technically would be deemed a multifamily structure. Anything with three or more dwelling units is deemed a multifamily structure. And so that would be my guess if, I doubt that they're going to go with something much higher than four dwelling units because there would be difficulty in finding the proper parking on the site as well. But I'm not a designer. I didn't try to figure out if they could squeeze five units. Uh, they could propose a development that might have attached townhomes that also subdivided the property as well so they were could be sold separately rather than just a rental property uh, so there are more than one possibility on how this site could be developed probably the what makes the most sense is a fourplex Thank you. are there any other questions yes uh, if I hear you correctly, then uh, there is not particularly a height restriction on this parcel we're talking about as as of now. There's, uh, I'm trying to remember now since I didn't bring my code. Uh, it, it may actually be in the staff report somewhere what the development standards of the R2 zone are, but I'm not, I think the, the height restriction is the same in the R1 and the R2 zone, and it's 35 feet. And that actually does accommodate uh, a three-story building. It is possible to get a three-story building in the height limit that's allowed. And I believe the zoning, the height is the same in both zoning districts. 
So theoretically, they could have 12, 12 units there. Yeah, there, the, what the limitation for the number of units is not a maximum that's allowed in the zone, but of the other uh, zoning requirements for landscaping, you have to have 30% of your lot in green space, and you have to have two, well, at least one parking space per unit if not more, depending on how many bedrooms there are. And so those are the limitations in developing the site. And the landscaping one is a pretty hefty one to crowd very many more than four units and still have 30% landscaping on your site. Are there any other questions? Yes. So the minimum dwelling units per acre was four, is that correct? Right, and there is no maximum. So the minimum in this being just over a quarter of an acre would be two dwelling units at a minimum then? I was calculating four. Uh, so it's, it's uh, a minimum of 14 units per acre, and this is about a quarter of an acre. Okay. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, I probably didn't make that clear. So the, the ordinance provision is that you must have a minimum of 14 units per acre, and this is just over a quarter of an acre. Gotcha. Thank you. Are there any other questions? <clears throat> okay. And we will move on to testimony from the proponents. And I think that that would be Mr. Jason Bristol. Is that? That's correct. Okay. <clears throat> If you could uh, step forward, state your name and address, and we're happy to hear from you. Right. Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Jason Bristol, 21733 South Highway 99. Yeah, push the button there. At the, there oh, you yeah. go. Okay, there we go. Jason Bristol, 21733 South Highway 99E. Um, I am the applicant. Uh, my mom is actually the owner of the property, and the... say that the house is about 900 square feet total so if you haven't driven by or seen it it's a very small house it's uh, in bad condition there's no foundation so it, it has a curved front end it has three sides of concrete and okay um, over time it's it's really been neglected uh, it's not something that without a lot of money that would actually um, have a long lifespan. So really at, at some point in the near future, the house is gonna need either a lot of money or demolition and rebuild. And really with uh, a lot that's 0.27 acres, almost 12,000 square feet, uh, it's a pretty great location for high density. Um, it's, as Brian pointed out, area H. It's um, designated for multifamily and duplexes. The removal of that property and then putting a single family home back on it would be uh, pretty sad in, in the long term future of the city in underutilizing that lot and its potential. Uh, That's, that was the, the, really the only thing I wanted to point out about the house. And um, I guess, too, if upon uh, site and design review and construction of whatever takes place, frontage of the property on North Locust Street, as well as <clears throat> sidewalks and all that good stuff, would be put in. Uh, currently, it's no curb, and the pavement doesn't go all the way across, and there's a partial sidewalk so we'd also get more of that going on is uh is the home currently occupied it is okay uh, I, I guess one other thing i could point out is uh this isn't high density development in that area it's not something that hasn't taken place uh directly across the street there's two duplexes and two single family homes that recently i say recently it, i guess in in development time period, it is recent. Uh, those went in, and around the corner, 
that Emerald Gardens is going in as well, which is that, the down-home project in there. Does anybody have any questions for uh, Mr. Bristol? Thank you very much. Are there, looking out at the vast array of uh, people in our audience, are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Anybody that is considered neutral? I will close the uh, public testimony. So, um, do we have any questions for, any more questions for staff or for, for Jason? Okay. Uh, so, uh, no additional testimony, so we will move right on to making a decision or we will discuss this and then we'll make a decision. Do you have any particular thoughts on this? Um. The person I spoke with, or spoke with me, about this has concern about changing the complexion of uh, that area, uh, particularly in light of the fact that, uh, Brian, could you go back to the map picture that you had up at first there? That was the zoning. That's, As it that's, that's close enough. changing the complexity the complexion of the area that it uh, it's changing the livability uh, and suitability of the current re uh, residents there so um, she wanted me to uh, relay this to the, the board here so and I have done so <clears throat> any any other thoughts on on this matter. Okay. Um, then, my well, my thinking is that uh, that that is that's kind of the nature of the neighborhood. You know, it's, it's that it's going to be multifamily dwelling there, and that will be marching along. You know, these areas here eventually right down the down the way that is now currently R1 will eventually all become uh, R2 plus the fact that the home is in disrepair and so the options are are either um, for the for the owner to either put a lot of money into another single family dwelling uh, which I'm not quite sure whether that will be um, Fit any fit into the neighborhood any better than a than a uh, couple of duplexes. Um, so that would be my thinking as well. So I will entertain a motion to um, approve the. Um, The rezoning uh, zone change uh, at 548 North Locust Street from R1 <coughs> low density residential zone to R2 high density residential zone ZC16-05. I make a, I make a motion that we approve the zone change ZC16-05. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. You have a zone change. Okay. Um, we'll move on to the final decision. Uh, these are the final written versions of the oral decision that we just took. So I will entertain a motion for a final decision. Sounds like the final decision is for the Pudding River chocolates instead of this one? 
yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's, yeah, that isn't tonight's final decision. I just dawned on me to that, that as well. This is from our last planning commission meeting final decision. So you'll see the written final decision at your next meeting for this case <coughs> tonight. So this one is for the Pudding, Pudding River, is that correct? I thought we did the final. Oh, yeah, that's that's the other thing. We need to do the final. <laughs> Thanks for for Laney here pointing out that you've actually made a recommendation to the council on this particular request mm. tonight. So that was that was our primary reason for not having a a uh, written oh. findings tonight. Uh, we don't necessarily need one. We could do one so that the council can see what your reasoning was for approving this. But you've made a recommendation now. Rezonings do go on to the council for final decision. But didn't we make a... Uh, you made a oral decision on the SASE at your last planning commission meeting. We did not have a findings prepared for you at that time. And so we have it prepared now, and it's now prepared, and it should be in your packet. At least it was in my. Oh, there it is. Okay. Thank you, Derek, for. I didn't even catch that. And we did put quite a few bullets in there that were trying to summarize various statements. So it's really everything's pretty standard except the bullets that you see those are the things that were said that we tried to capture were your findings that were unique not necessarily in our staff report but came out at the meeting these are the ones that are uh, found on page 30 of 31 so the rest of it is standard wording So our final decision is is going to um, be to approve uh, CUP backslash VAR 16-02 for Scott and Teresa Sassy, Puddin River Chocolates. Yeah, um, with the understanding that these five bullet points that we discussed last uh, two weeks ago, or the last time we met, um, do, the, do those uh, need to be uh, incorporated into the um, um, proposal? I mean, that we're going to pass. No, I mean, this, or we are, or we this, already gone through that. I mean, that's what this does: is that you've, when you deliberated to arrive at your approval of their proposal, these are some of the things that were stated as your reasoning as to why you thought it was suitable to approve it. And so we placed them in here so that we now have a written record of your findings that was went beyond what was in our staff report. Okay. So all we're looking to do is... Uh, is so it, yeah, you're just approving, approving the findings, and okay. if they look appropriate, then that's the final record that'll be in the file for from now on. <laughs> okay. Does anybody want to take a minute to review those bullet points, or are we good to go? Okay. Good. Then I will entertain a motion to approve uh, CUP-VAR 16-02 Scott and Teresa Sassy. Pudding River Chocolates. Mr. Chair, I recommend the findings, uh, conclusions, and final order for CUP 1602 slash variance 1602 uh, be approved at this time. Mr. Chair, I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Um, items of interest from, uh, from you, Brian, or Laney. 
whoever feels like maybe Laney has something I mean we've got we do have a meeting on January 23rd we'll be getting that packet out this Friday and uh, it, as it indicates here it's a minor partition uh, happens to be on a actually we didn't write which one that was that's the Olson Olson, yeah, Pierce. Olson Pierce it's a combination of a lot line adjustment and a, it's actually two applications being done at the same time lot line adjustment and a minor partition and who are the applicants and, uh, actually uh, they have a representative is it senator Tinder? it's actually senator olson i think he also has a construction company and it's the pierce family that's forget which road that's on now I'm getting them all confused now we've got too many applications we're working on <laughs> so okay. anyhow you can wait till next meeting <laughs> <laughs> it'll be an adventure exactly okay um, Derek did you indicate that you would not be able to be at that meeting me no yeah, okay, I thought so. okay. I've got some traveling for business uh, in February, February but I don't know what okay. those days will fall on but I'll let you know ahead of time okay great thank you um, any items of interest uh, from anybody here okay then I will entertain a motion to adjourn Mr. Chair I move that we adjourn this meeting Second. all in favor say aye aye, aye. we are adjourned Right.